In this tutorial, I will explain the concept of a visual perspective. A visual perspective represents a screen layout displayed to the user, usually when the user logs in. A WRM automatically creates two visual perspectives for each business space version. One for the administrator and one for guest. Let's take a look at the visual perspective for the administrator. When a user logs in, a WRM displays the visual perspective that corresponds to the access level of the user who logs in. For details about a WRM access levels, please watch the access levels tutorial or read the user guide. For every access level that you define in your application, you must specify a visual perspective that will be used for this access level. This is done by ticking this checkbox. Since a WRM always creates two access levels, administrator and guest, it also creates two visual perspectives for these access levels. You don't need to use separate visual perspectives for each access levels though. You can use one visual perspective for several access levels. This can be done in this dialog here. A visual perspective consists of frames. A list of available frames is presented in this area here. Let's switch all of them on and look at them. At any time we can select preview from the burger menu, menu at the top and see how the visual perspective will look to the end user. So let's do this. So this is our visual perspective with all frames displayed. A visual perspective can have a banner frame displayed at the top of the screen, which is great for displaying logos, images, HTML links and so on. Then there is a top bar, which is used for a horizontal menu, left and right frames that can be used either for a menu or for displaying application specific forms, a footer area that can be used to display copyright, status bar, and the main frame where most interaction with the user occurs. All frames except the main frame are optional and can be turned off. You can set the properties of a particular frame by clicking on a little icon next to the frame. Here you can specify the size of the frame, turn borders on or off, make the frame collapsible, specify background and so on. A frame can contain tabs. By default a single tab is created for the frame and when there is only one tab it is not displayed on the screen. Let's define another tab for our main frame. There are two tabs now and they should be displayed on the screen. Let's see how they look. So here we can see our main frame with two tabs, main and tab 2. We can switch between them and they should display different contents, but at the moment our tabs are empty. Tabs can be displayed at the top or at the bottom of the frame. Properties of a tab can be specified in this dialog here. Tabs can have icons, badges and can be closed. A tab consists of content panels. By default, a single content panel is created. If you click on a content panel, you can see its properties in the area on the right. Frequently used properties of, of the content panel can be accessed using the Panel Properties tab, while less frequently used properties can be specified here. One of the most important properties of a content panel is its contents, which is specified here. As you can see, by default, content panels are empty. I can put some HTML into the content panel 
or get it to display a query, run a process, or run another command. Let's get our content panel to run a query. For more details about queries, please watch the queries tutorial or read the user guide. I have used this application in other tutorials, and in this application we have customers and a query that shows all customers. The query is started from the application menu, but for the purposes of this exercise, I will display this query inside a content panel, so that it runs immediately when the user logs in. So I click on the contents properties here and select show results of query. We only have one query called customers. Let's see how this works. So we'll log into our application. And we can see that our query is immediately displayed inside the main frame. Let's say that our application allows customers to log into the system under the special customer access level. And when they log in, we want the system to automatically show their details on the screen. I'll show you how to do this. I have already defined a customer access level. So we need to define a visual perspective for this access level. We create a new visual perspective, give it a name, and we indicate that this visual perspective will be used for the customer access level only. The visual perspective will have just one tab and one content panel. And this content panel needs to show a form of the logged in customer. This can be done by specifying a special command of the type change login details as contents of our panel. The command shows the default form of the object. If we wanted some other form, we could write a process that shows this form and then start the process in the content panel. So let's see how this works now. So now I will log in as customer, not as an administrator. As you can see, I can immediately see the form of the customer. We can create more than one content panel for a tab. Here I'm adding another one. When there is more than one, we can lay out these panels using some predefined layouts. A list of available layouts can be seen here. Every layout is different and explaining their differences is beyond the scope of this tutorial. They are well explained in the user guide and you can also click on the show explanation button here to read quick description of what the layout does. We recommend that you use responsive layouts for most of your applications. Responsive grid simple and responsive grid nested. These layouts are explained in detail in the responsiveness tutorial. So please make sure you watch it. Properties of a layout can be specified in this tab here. For example, for a table layout, we can specify the number of columns here. Let's look at some examples of layouts. In the sales portal sample application, for example, we have a responsive nested layout which consists of many content panels. And this is how it looks. We can see different content panels here.
the issue resolution sample application contains an example of a column layout. In this layout, content panels are laid out in several columns. In the list of content panels, some content panels indicate the end of the current column. This means that the next content panel starts a new column. Here we have two columns, and this is how it looks. The two columns can be seen here. You can also direct the output of the content panel into another content panel, or into a model or modeless window, or a new tab. This means that if the user clicks on any link in the content panel, the result will be displayed in another panel, or a window, or a new tab will be created. You can specify this in the output target property here. We can see that for our main content panel, we can direct output to, to the panel 2 content panel, to a new tab, pop-up window, or a modeless window. In the CRM sample application, for example, when the user clicks on an alert, it is displayed in a modeless window. Let me show you. So here we have the dashboard of the CRM sample application and one of the content panels here is a list of alerts. When I click on the edit alert button, the form of the alert is displayed in the modeless window. Let's now go back to our sample application that shows the list of customers in its main content panel. Let's now make a change so, so that when the user clicks on the customer in the list, we will display a form of the customer underneath this list. To do so, we will define the second content panel. Let's rename the first one to customer list. And let's call the second one selected customer. The first one shows the results of our query, and the second one is initially empty. Let's limit the height of the first panel to 400 pixels, and designate the second panel as the output for the first one. Let's see how this works. So after I log in into our application, I can see the list of customers, and when I click Edit, the form of the selected customer is displayed underneath the list. Frames can contain an application menu, rather than tabs. Menus can be specified only in the top bar, left or right frames. The menu is laid out horizontally if it's in the top bar, or vertically if it's in the left or right frames. Let's open our menu in the top bar. When specifying a menu, you need to choose the widget that will represent the menu. Different widgets look differently, and some widgets have limitations on how many menu levels they can show. To see the differences between widget types, click on the Show Explanation button here. Most modern applications use the toolbar widget for the top menu and panel bar for the vertical menu. Let me show you the example in the CRM sample application. So here we see our top bar menu represented by the toolbar widget and here we can see the menu in the left frame represented by the panel bar widget.
the contents of the menu can, can be specified in this area here. The properties of a menu item are specified in this area. The most important one is the command that a where I am will invoke. Usually it's either run query or start a process, but many other commands are available as well. I will show you for example how to add a menu item that switches visual perspectives. Previously I told you that a visual perspective is usually associated with an access level and is displayed when a user with this access level logs in. However, it is not always the case and you can define visual perspectives that have nothing to do with users logging in. Such visual perspectives are often used in processes. You can write a process that uses the display perspective action to display a particular visual perspective or a display layout action that displays a particular tab of a particular perspective. You can also use a particular visual perspective in a menu. For example, let's define another visual perspective and a menu command that will switch from one perspective to another. So here I create a new perspective and it will be an empty perspective by default. It will not be associated with any logged in user. And in our main perspective, I will add a menu item that will switch to this perspective. I, I select change perspective command and then choose our new perspective. Let's see how this works. When we log in, we can now see a new menu command in our application toolbar and when we click on it, the visual perspective has changed to the empty one. This tutorial has been an introduction to visual perspectives in Aware I Am. However, to grasp the full power of visual perspectives, you need to explore all options on your own and use the user guide as your reference material.